For part A, we're trying to show that this equation here can be rewritten as this. So we're going to be using the double angle formulae. We're going to be using sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cos x. We have no option for that one. That's the only way we can break down that sine 2x. For the cos 2x, we have a few different options. So those are our three options. We have to figure out which one of these three things we have to use that will help us get from here to here. So it's not very clear, first of all, which one exactly we would use. So the first thought that I had for this question is that we have cos x minus sine x here. This is part of, if you think of the difference of two squares, cos squared x minus sine squared x. This can be rewritten as cos x minus sine x multiplied by cos x plus sine x. That's the first thing I thought of. So I thought we could change this cos 2x into cos squared x minus sine squared x. That cos squared x minus sine squared x then breaks down into this. And that's one way in which we can get cos x minus sine x. Obviously, other stuff will have to cancel out as well. So let's just put this into our equation and see if it works. So for these kinds of questions, sometimes you just have to use trial and error. Use an educated guess. So the sine 2x becomes 2 sine x cos x. Now, cos 2x. I'm going to start with cos squared x minus sine squared x. Let's see if this works. This is equal to 1 plus sine x. So again, just changing the sine 2x into this, changing the cos 2x into this. Now, I'll bring everything to the left side. So 2 sine x cos x minus 1 minus sine x. That's just bringing what we have on the right to the left. And I'll change the cos squared x minus sine squared x into cos x minus sine x cos x plus sine x. Now with these two terms here, we could factorize out sine x. So we can do that. Take out sine x, we get 2 cos x minus 1. We have a minus 1 left over. And then we have the cos x minus sine x cos x plus sine x. I don't see a way to go from here. I don't see how we can factorize cos x minus sine x out, for instance. So I don't think this method is going to work, or it's at least not the easiest way to do it. So let's see what else we can do, going back to what we have up here. So the next thing I thought of we could do for this question is to use this identity here, the 1 minus 2 sine squared x, for two reasons. One, because we have a sine x here. So I'm thinking that using sine x means we can easily factorize out sine x. And two, we have a 1 over here. So when this cos 2x turns into 1 minus 2 sine squared x, the one that we have here, the one that we have here, they'll both cancel out. That could be a good thing. I'm not sure. Let's find out. So let's change the cos 2x into 1 minus 2 sine squared x now. So again, the sine 2x has to become that. The cos 2x is now going to be 1 minus 2 sine squared x, so plus 1 minus 2 sine squared x, and that is equal to 1 plus sine x. Okay, so 1's cancel. Bring the sine x to the left. 2 sine x cos x minus 2 sine squared x minus sine x is 0. Factorize out sine x. 2 cos x minus 2 sine x minus 1. So sine x is equal to 0 is a solution. Now our domain is 0 to pi over 2. So if we were to solve the equation sine x is equal to 0, we end up with x is equal to 0, pi, and 2 pi. So think of a sine graph, think of where it crosses the x-axis. So none of those three values are in this domain. So therefore, this has no solutions. We're just therefore looking at what we have here. The 2 cos x minus 2 sin x minus 1 is going to be 0. 2 cos x. So set this bracket equal to 0. Factorize out 
the 2, bring the 1 to the right, and finally divide both sides by 2, and there we have it. So yeah, for these kinds of proof questions, make an educated guess, see what you think might work, or try out what you think might work. If it doesn't work, try the next possible solution. Usually difference of two squares, that's something that, that commonly works in a lot of proof questions, which is why I started with that. It didn't work out, so then I just went on to the next possible thing. Okay, for part B, express cos x plus pi over 4 in the form of ra cos x plus b sin x. r, a, and b are constants. Okay, so let's expand out the cos x plus pi over 4. So, addition formula, cos x plus pi over 4. This can be rewritten as cos x cos pi over 4 minus sin x sine pi over 4. Cos pi over 4, sine pi over 4, they're both root 2 over 2. Factorize out that root 2 over 2. And we end up with this. So again, cos pi over 4 and sine pi over 4 are both root 2 over 2. I've just factorized that out. Now, if we want to write it in the form of r times a cos x plus b sine x, I think that's what it was, r a cos x plus b sine x, yes, then that would mean that r is equal to root 2 over 2, a is 1, and b is equal to minus 1. And for part c, use the results of part a and part b to solve the trigonometric equation. So this here. Okay, that's the same as what we have above. This is the exact same equation as what we have here. And remember from part A, we rewrote this equation as this. So basically, we're trying to solve this equation here. We also got, actually wait, first let me write that down. So for part C, we're trying to solve sine x minus cos x. Was that it? No, cos x minus sine x is equal to a half. Cos x minus sine x is a half. We're trying to solve that in between 0 and pi over 2. Okay, and then we had worked out that cos of x plus pi over 4 is equal to this. I think we had that written down below, so we're going to be using this rule, or this equation. Cos x plus pi over 4 is equal to root 2 over 2 cos x minus sine x. So, we have cos x minus sine x over here. We can then replace this with what we have here, divided by root 2 over 2. So just rearranging that equation. Cos x minus sine x, so rearranging the equation on the right-hand side, that's equal to 2 over root 2, cos x plus pi over 4. And here are those two equations. This is the one we're trying to solve. This was what we showed in part b. Combine the two things together, so we then end up with... So first of all, 2 over root 2, that's the same thing as just root 2. So we end up with root 2 cos of x plus pi over 4 is equal to a half. We can solve this. So x was between 0 and pi over 2. Add pi over 4 to both of these. And we end up with, so the 0 becomes pi over 4. This becomes x plus pi over 4. And this becomes 3 pi over 4. OK, so then bring the root 2 over. So divide by root 2. And then inverse cos, we get 1.209. So these numbers, the pi over 4 and the 3 pi over 4, I'll just write down what they are as decimals, just so it's easy for you to see how the numbers that we have compare to the domain. So this is 0 0.785, and the 3 pi over 4 is 2.356. OK, so using cast diagrams, using graphs, using whatever method, we can find the alternative angles for cos x plus pi over 4 is equal to this. 
This is the first angle. The quickest way for a cos function is to just do 2 pi minus this. So 2 pi minus that answer, and we end up with 5.074. Now that's not in our domain, so we can ignore that one. We can then just take away pi over 4 from the 1.209, and we end up with 0 0.424, which will be our final answer.